6, 2001, respect to solid format. To be perfect. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here today. We should pray that you will guide us and direct us tonight. Lord, we will make the best decision, what's best for and the safest for all of our kids and our uh, teachers and staff and all of our residents of Ohio County. We pray that we'll be good stewards and, Lord, make wise decisions. And we give you praise for all that you do. Pray that you keep all of our kids safe and out of harm's way. And we give you praise for all that you do, because we know without you, we can't do nothing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ohio County Schools provide students with the skills, knowledge, and support to achieve excellence and become lifelong learners. All right, you have your agenda in front of you. Being this special call, we can't make, we can't add nothing to it. There's only one thing on there, so we can't pull it off. So. All right, any motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion. We have a motion. All second. Have a second. All in favor? Motion to carry. All right. <coughs> we'll have no request to speak. Do you want the board members have anything? No. Mr. Superintendent. Yeah, just a couple things before we actually get into uh, the reopening plan. What a summer that it has uh, continued to be. Uh, I will certainly say that uh, this has definitely been the most stressful time that I have ever experienced in my 23 years of education. Never dreamed that this would be where we're at and what we're even discussing tonight, the possibilities. And as you can imagine, and you know, I've talked with you enough, it has been a challenge. It's been difficult. Every time you think you're piecing something together and you're getting on the right track, something happens and it changes. And we're having to regroup and reconvene. And, and sometimes, it, some days it really takes its toll. And you go home and you toss and turn and when you're trying to sleep at night, trying to decide what's the best option for the students and staff of Ohio County Schools. It's certain that we take serious you know, it's not something that we are doing half-heartedly or not putting a lot of time in it. Uh, I know my staff, it feels like we've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this document we're gonna look at tonight in these decisions. We've polled parents, we've polled staff, we've polled principals. And I'll be honest with you, anytime you do those polls, you get a lot of opinions. And none of those opinions are the same. We poll the parents, you get a variety of options that they would like to see. You poll the staff, you do get a variety of options you'd like to see. One of the options that I'll propose tonight is the one that got the most votes, if you will, the most traction. Uh, but then even how you do that particular model, there's different ways that we'll discuss tonight that a hybrid schedule could look. But then I'll certainly share the one that I would ask you to approve this evening, but there's, there's different ways that it, it could work and look. And that's what's been tough about this. There are numerous options that we could select even tonight. And not one option out there is perfect. If it was, this would be easy and I wouldn't be so stressed this summer because I'd say, here it is, here's the golden plan, let's, let's move forward, folks. There is no golden plan. There's no silver bullet. Every option that's out there, every option has flaws. So unfortunately, we're gonna to have to choose what we feel is the best flawed option for Ohio County Schools and move forward. And with that being said, you're gonna hear me say numerous times probably tonight, what we approve is what our plan is tonight. Next week, that plan could change, unfortunately. In the plan tonight, you're gonna to hear me talk a lot about a stoplight. And just like a stoplight, you have red, yellow, and green. That's how we're going to discuss our in-person option, which I feel is the absolute best. You know, we're going to have green and what that means, and yellow, what that means, and red. And I'll talk about those when we get into the plan. But none of those are perfect. All of them have cons, if you will. But we will certainly do what we feel is best. You know, as superintendent, you have many duties and responsibility along with everyone else in this room. A couple of those duties, one is to educate. You know, it's my job to make sure that we're educating students and we take that serious and we wanna make sure that we can put the best product we can out there because that's what we have to do. We're committed to do that. 
but we also are charged with safety of our students and staff. And so we've got to keep that in mind as well and determine what option provides the best education, but we can do so safely. And so we'll walk through that tonight. I just wanted to give you a little background about, I know you already knew this, but it's been very challenging, it continues to be. Uh, you know how it's been. There's always been moments and times that we deal with difficult situations and you deal with those and move forward, they're short-lived. This is certainly something that has not been short-lived and unfortunately it won't be short-lived. We're gonna be dealing with this for many, many months. And all of these options that we share tonight, at some point in time this school year, we will be in every one of these options. At some point in time, it's going to happen. It's probably inevitable. Also, if you've paid attention to our numbers lately, even though they've been a little bit better, there's still, I think, 500 and something cases today that the governor shared. If you look at the numbers for Ohio County, when you look at Green River Health Department, we're not really where we need to be. Uh, Davis County has 700 and something cases. We've got over 350, and we're certainly, that's about half, but we're not half the size of Davis County. So there's a lot of factors that we have to look at when providing instruction on what we can do safely and effectively. And if those factors change, even before August 26, where we're at on that stoplight might have to change to a different color and we have to be prepared to switch on a moment's notice. If you've listened to the governor, he said yesterday, when asked about school, he pretty much said again, if I had to make the decision today, there will not be in person. We will all be going virtual. So even what we decide tonight, what I'm gonna to recommend tonight, it could be changed before we even get to that point. But I'll say more as we get into the plan. I'll stop right there, Mr. Chairman. All right. <clears throat> all right, we have no consent. <clears throat> First item on action would be approved 2020-2021 school year reopening all right this is the one and only action item tonight this is what we're here for and i want to kind of walk through this document and tell you a little about it a little bit about it and where we stand and then we'll discuss what hybrid would look like and some options but then we'll look at what i'm proposing uh, but ultimately i will need your blessing your approval for those obviously you see this nice plan I, let me begin by saying i can't take credit for all of this a lot of it may be some of my ideas and a lot of it's on paper that I scratched out, but I certainly didn't make it look this nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to chalk that up to my staff, Cheston Hoover, Daniel McCoy, Kara, um, Christy, Kim, a lot of us have weighed in on bits and pieces of what should be in this plan. And Dan Daniel McCoy, who is very tech savvy, has certainly made it look very nice. Uh, and Cheston's probably done most of the typing for me and putting everything. So I appreciate all of them and their help and just their support because I'm going to tell you I've needed it. These last several days have been really tough and I've leaned heavily on them probably more so the last couple of days than I ever have uh, for their, their, their ideas, their opinions. When you turn in the reopening plan, first you have that message from me. I won't read it to you, I'll let you look over that, but it's just kind of a general message that if we approve this plan tonight, I would like to share with the, the world tomorrow. And so they would see my message. When then you get to the next page, it's what to expect. And again, it's just reiterating that we wanna provide the best learning experience as possible, that that's what we're here for and that's what we're committed to. And it talks about a key word that you've already heard many times, flexibility that that's the one word that's gonna to have to describe school this year, and even all of us, is flexibility. We're gonna to have to be willing to change and adapt and be willing to pivot at a moment's notice if that's what it takes. You see the philosophy? There, I'm already playing my hand there in bold in that second sentence. However, due to COVID-19, well, let me just read the first sentence or talk about it. We've been saying all along, and I had you all approve last month, that we were gonna to go to school five days a week, everybody. I don't believe that's where we're at now. We've continued to see high numbers. I don't think, I think it's a mistake 
if we try to go in person with everybody five days a week, as much as I would like that instructionally, I just don't see the logistics of being able to keep everybody in the building at full capacity. We would certainly have to wear masks from the moment we get on the bus until the time we get off the bus. I would prefer not to do that. That's why you see that I'm recommending a hybrid model, which will be an AB schedule, and that will basically reduce our building capacities to half and really potentially closer to 40% because we're assuming once I turn this online virtual application open, where the assumption is that about 20% of our kids are gonna go straight virtual, if not more. So that might leave roughly 80% in person. So if we do an AB schedule, 40%. So when you're looking at the given school, and if that school has 300, and if 20% are virtual, then you look at what's left roughly at 40%. You know, in theory, you may only have 120 students in that building each day. And we'll, we'll continue to say more about that. But if you flip the page, it's a reminder of the three options that we have said all along we will offer. We will offer an in-person option. I'll say more about that in a moment. A virtual option that will be through a program that people will have to have internet access and we will give them the software free of charge at program. And then there's an NTI learning model that folks, parents will have to request via the schools and that's saying, hey, I do not have internet, I can't do the virtual, because that'll be the option that we'll, we'll ask them to go to if they're not coming to school, virtual. But if they absolutely don't have internet or can't get to a hot spot, then their option would be NTI learning. And as I mentioned before, that is our, I hate to say the least favorite, that's the least effective, let me say it that way, option because that's packets, folks. That's every week we gather up materials like we do for kids that are on homebound. We're sending packets home. They're completing the work on their own independently and then bringing it back. So they're pretty much definitely on their own there. That's my least favorite, virtual being the one in the middle. At least that program provides some tutelage and examples and gives them a little bit uh, more instruction. But back on option one, in person. There's three levels of in-person instruction that we're gonna utilize. And think of the stoplight. So red, that's the most cautious. Red means remote. If we feel like we're in a state of red, that could be because of increased numbers, that could be because of an outbreak in the county or at a school uh, with staff or students, we would have to instantly go red. It could be because the governor tells us to. And that would be 100% remote. That means teachers would be coming to the building daily and staff. They would teach. The computer would be on and, and everybody that has internet would be at home watching the instruction. Unfortunately, not everybody has internet. So for those students, we would have to be pushing packets again. And we would do so on a weekly basis instead of the monthly basis that we did last year. We all agree that was not the best ending to the school year, but it was the best we could put together in such a short time. That's not really what we wanna do for this school year, but it may be the case for some students if they, they can't ac access the internet. Then there's yellow. That's where I, I just proposed a few moments ago that I think that's where we're at right now. And that's to be cautious, to have school in person, but to do so with an A-B schedule so that our numbers will be cut in half. And we will talk more about what that model looks like in just a moment. And then the least cautious would be things are going well, we'll go back to normal. That would be green. Green light says we're five days a week. When I say normal, unless the CDC changes their guidelines anytime soon, we would always be wearing a mask. But meaning that our numbers are getting controlled and stable so much so we could resume five days a week, everybody there, full capacity. We're certainly not there now, we're at yellow. If you flip the page, each of these pages breaks down what that instruction looks like. So here's level one for the in-person remote. Again, this is where the governor could ask us to go to. This is where if things get worse, we would end up at. And it's exactly what I just shared about how they would be teaching 
from our schools, but kids would be learning remotely. And it also indicates there, if you don't have internet, what that would look like with home hospitals. So I won't repeat myself. But that page explains what remote is. The next page is hybrid. That's where I believe we're at right now with what I would like to propose. Here's where a lot of discussion comes in. And I'll tell you, even my own administrative staff, principals, all have different opinions on what the hybrid should look like. Let me give you some examples. Some school systems that are this direction, well, I'll just say them, Davis County and Owensboro, they're doing a hybrid schedule. They're doing A and B. A's coming Monday, Tuesday. They're having an off day on Wednesday. And then they're going Thursday and Friday with the B group. So that's what they've chosen to do. I inquired about that. The, the off day is for deep cleaning, but it's also really for logistical reasons so that they can continue to make sure everything's flowing the way it should and everybody has their ducks in a row. Uh, I was also told that if we continued in that state that theirs would probably change at some point in time to where they would implement all days instead of having an off day. You've got Grayson County who has a model that Monday is A, Tuesday is B, Wednesday is A, Thursday is B, and then they're off on Fridays. The model that I'm proposing to you tonight, and I'm proposing this because of instruction. Davis County's model, I understand where they're coming from, I do, I get it. But to me, if you have kids come in on Monday and Tuesday, and then you have all those days without instruction that they're having to learn all this work that's been sent home, and it's, it's a five days before Monday rolls around again. I like the alternating days. So my proposal is we'll have the two groups, A and B. Group A would go Monday, Wednesday, every other Friday. Group B would go Tuesday, Thursday, every other Friday. Now, what that does in every two weeks period, both groups pick up one extra day of instruction. So instead of four days of learning, they would get five days of learning in person. And the reason why I felt like that's the option that I feel is the best, and trust me, I've wrestled with it. I've went back and forth, but my heart tells me this is the best because our kids need us. And we all agree that the best form of instruction that we can provide, everybody has said this, is in person. So if it's safe enough for us to go to school two days a week, it ought to be safe enough for us to add an extra day in there every other week for kids. They're getting in-person instruction instead of being another day at home. They're getting fed. We know that they're safe when they're coming to us. And then instructionally, how I said how I feel it's better, they go to school Monday, they, they receive their instruction. On Tuesday, they practice what they just learned. Then on Wednesday, they're back now learning step two, if you will. And then on Thursday, they're getting to practice step two. There's never that long period of time where they're off, where you come back and, and depending on how well their independent learning was, you almost have to start over again. So me personally and, and my staff here think that the alternating days is the best plan of succession for instruction. That way it builds and is more fluid. There's more consistency. Go a day, off a day. Go a day, off a day. Will that create some confusion for the every other Friday? Possibly. But that's where we'll have to do a good job of indicating our, our weeks that blue is tied with A, white is tied with B, and that this is a blue week. Then next week's a white week. We'll have to send out calendars that shows this is exactly when A goes each week. This is exactly when B goes each week. One downside to that that you'll hear from the, the community and potentially even staff, and I get it, is childcare. What do we do on the days we don't go to school? I understand that. That's a good question. But, and, and trust me, that's been part of our decision-making process and a factor that we've looked at, but I still feel the best option for instruction for us to educate kids is the hybrid model. And I know that will put a burden childcare wise, but we cannot go to school five days a week right now, in my opinion. And if we go straight virtual, 
guess what? You still got a childcare problem, but now you got it five days a week instead of two or three days a week. But, uh, yes? On uh, like elementary school, middle school, or high school, if you got siblings going to them, are you gonna try to make sure that they're on the same days, all of them? Yes, if we, we will separate by households, mm -hmm. meaning regardless of their last name, because some households are blended, you know, they may live in the same house, but one, one last name may be starts with a B and the other one may start with the Z. So we'll separate by households, meaning that household would go on A day or that household would go on B day. Okay. And if somehow when we're sorting it out on Infinite Campus, if we make an error, we'll fix it. And the same is true uh, with child care. You know, we're going to have to draw the line somewhere, whether it's alphabetically or really Infinite Campus once you indicate this group of kids are virtual, it'll take everybody that's left and divide you in two groups. It's, they've added that feature. So that'll do most of the heavy lifting for us. But then after that, we're gonna have to do some hand touching because there'll be some problems. Uh, an example, let's say Beth and I live in the same subdivision and uh, I have two juniors. Let's say she has younger children that she doesn't want left at home. I was scheduled to go on B day, she was scheduled for her kids to go on A day, but we've made an arrangement that my children are gonna watch her children. That way they're providing childcare. So if that's a legitimate reason, and it is, she contacts the school and says, hey, they're on A, I'm on B, vice versa. They're gonna be watching my kids. We really need to get on the same day if that's at all possible. We'll make those adjustments. We will move them to either A or B to make it work. And then the next time somebody's got an issue, we'll move them to the opposite so that it'll still stay balanced. Because mm -hmm. that's the key in this. You've got to get it as balanced as possible. And if we do that, like I mentioned earlier, a school of 300 having 120 roughly in the building, then when you look at the number of staff they have being 12 to 14, I mean, we could have, depending on how this works out, as few as eight kids and as many as 12 kids in a classroom. If we can do that, we can social distance. That doesn't mean they can eliminate these. They'll have to wear them on the bus. They'll have to wear them in the school. They have to wear them in the hallways. But when they're sitting at a desk and everybody else in the room is seated, and if we've got the desks six feet apart or greater with eight to 10 kids in the room, then the teacher could say, if you want to remove your mask, you could do so at this time. And then they could take it off and be a little more comfortable perhaps. And then the teacher could even remove their mask if they're staying away from greater than six feet away, teach the lesson. And then if they're gonna to need to walk through the room to provide instruction, they may say, I need everybody to put your mask up because I'm gonna be coming through the room. And they could provide that one-on-one -on -one individual help over the shoulder if needed. If we went green with everybody in the building, there's no way the masks are ever coming down. We cannot social distance with 25 to 30 kids in any room. It's impossible. Hybrid AB is the only way we have a realistic shot at social distancing. It's the only way we can serve kids in the lunchroom. If you went straight green, you're gonna be eating in the classrooms because you can never funnel that many kids through the cafeteria and meet the guidelines that have been set forth. Uh, so that's why I'm recommending hybrid because it is the only one only option that I see feasibly logistically that we can master have good education but try to still keep everyone safe because we've been able to follow the appropriate guidelines well I was going to ask you another question on yep. the, the days that they're not going to be in class will they be able to like if they have internet would they be able to to watch that class on the computer? If, if we're in the hybrid model, they won't be able to watch that class because what's probably going to be happening in a lot of cases, the teacher, what they te taught on Monday is probably going to be what they have to teach on Tuesday. Oh, okay. That's the other one drawback to the hybrid model. You're not going to cover as much content because you're going to kind of be repeating yourself unless you're going to rely on them trying to learn it on their own on the off days. And we can do some of that, but you can't, you can't rely on that they're gonna master your original curriculum map day in and day out. 
when we do the hybrid model, everybody has to have the understanding, teachers included. It's not going to go like it does in a normal year. I know we have stressed and beat curriculum maps. You got to get it, got to get it, got to get it, got to follow it. We're not there, but that's not where we're at in the world right now. We've got to make sure we cover what's important. We've got to make sure they're exposed to that content, but we're in a different place. This isn't a regular school year where we're going to make sure from central office that we're beating on the principals. They got to follow those maps. They got to do this. They're behind. We can't do that. That's not realistic expectations for us to have of we got two principals sitting out there that wouldn't be fair to either one of them for us to be hounding them about what's going on in the school as far as the pacing pacing is going to look different with the hybrid what's this going to do like the school year doing this hybrid schedule anything doesn't change it at all because what the state is allowing you to do whether that student is physically in the building or doing some type of education remotely either way it's a day They've given allowances this year so that attendance can be taken, whether you're in school or NTI or remote, whatever you want to call it, virtual. All of them count as a day's worth of uh, instruction. And then, Do you have any idea how you're going to divide these kids up? Like in an elementary school, I know you're going to try to keep families together, or high school, you're going to do freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Yeah, basically what happens, the way I understand the way this infinite campus program will work, is we identify all of those who go virtual. So they get tagged the label, if you will, virtual. So it pulls them out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And then it takes everyone else that's left. We will still have to schedule everyone. We'll have to schedule, this is all the third graders, this is algebra one, this is geometry. We'll have to schedule that. Then once everybody's scheduled, you can then hit this certain feature and it'll do AB. It takes all of that group and divides everything in half to move them out. And it's supposed to still do it by the households. We haven't tried it yet. Don't know if it'll work perfectly or we're going to have to go back and hand touch. That you have, that will yeah, that. it's infinite campus that we have and the state has made an AB option, a feature on there that okay. we can utilize. Uh, again, we haven't tried it yet. Nobody has. When I talked to Davis County today, they're working on their schedules. Once their schedules are created, then they can flip the AB switch and see what happens. So nobody's tried it yet to see if it's going to work perfectly or if we're going to go in and do a lot of hand fixing, like, hey, it didn't pull. It put Johnny and Susie, who's in the same house, on different days. So we're going to move Johnny to this day and then potentially have to move somebody else to the other day. I'm sure it's going to have flaws and it's going to require those who put in the schedules extra hours to work on those schedules. Now all the virtual, Kim Ferris is going to put, all principals will have access to the online application. So they'll be able to look at any time through Google and see who's, who's going virtual but someone here is going to put all that in Infinite Campus. So we will take care of labeling or identifying all the virtual students so that then at the school level, they can look at who's left and start placing them appropriately at the grade levels to adjust their homeroom so that they're balanced. And at the high school, middle school to place them into schedules because you know their schedules are different when you've got multiple classes. And that was a good question you asked earlier, so let me address that too. Middle school and high school, they're gonna switch classes. I cannot wrap my head around any way to keep them from switching classes because there's just so much movement and there's no consistency from this group. All these math students don't necessarily go to English class next. So they're gonna to have to switch classes, but, it, but with 10, 10 kids or so, we're gonna to have to clean the desk in between each class, but I think we can do that if we're up to 10 or 12 kids or less. At the elementary level, what we're asking them to do is to cut down on transitions that if there needs to be, if they're specialized teachers, maybe the teachers can do the switching that way we don't have to keep as many desks clean. Not that they can't switch, but anytime we switch, you have gotta be prepared to clean. 
That way the furniture is wiped down before the next group of kids come and sit at that desk. That way if someone is asymptomatic and, and have COVID-19, we're at least getting an opportunity to prep the surface before the next person sets down unknowingly who was sitting there before. Like I said, there's various options of the hybrid model and, and you can make good rational sense and reasoning on all of them. To me, this is the one that makes the most sense. Uh, that off day to me, not saying it's not important, but we need to be teaching and educating kids. And I know we can say we would do that remotely or virtually on Wednesdays. I'm confident that our in-person instruction by far outweighs our remote instruction any day of the week. So my belief is that we go while we can go. So if, if, we, if it's safe to go four days a week, we might as well go that fifth day a week and teach kids instead of hoping we can teach them remotely when not every one of our students have internet. We might be able to teach to 50% of them, but what's the other 50% gonna do on Wednesday? I just think it's better that they're there in person as often as we can get them there at reduced numbers. So that's why I'm recommending this model of hybrid to you tonight. And again, I know uh, that that's not 100% unanimous. I've got administrators that probably prefer other models, but I did do this for my own peace of mind because I don't want to do something that's seen as not safe. So I contacted the health department today, Mr. Clay Horton, he's the director of Green River Health Department. Because in Davis County's plan, he wrote them a letter of endorsement. And I said, I know you don't have time to review my whole plan, but I know you'd like the Davis County's AA, off a day, BB model. You said it was good. Here's what I'm wanting to do. Monday, Wednesday, every other Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, every other Friday. So kids would be there. He and his staff reviewed it. He called me back and said, you're good. I think it's more than appropriate. The key is you're reducing the size of the number of people that's there and don't intermingle them. Don't have A's and B's there at the same time. As long as you clean every night and you do every night because you have to, then you're fine. I think that model's appropriate. Understand your reasoning. I said, well, they had that model. I didn't know if you encouraged that off day. He said, no, that off day is what those districts chose to do for logistical reasons. It was not at the recommendation of the health department. I would endorse your plan just like I've endorsed their plan. Um, so I said, thank you. I wanted to make sure to get your blessing before I move forward tonight, because if he didn't give me his blessing, then I would have presented something different under hybrid this evening. Uh, I certainly wasn't going to go against what the health department recommended, but I spoke with him and also uh, Becky Horn as well that works here at our local health department to get their blessing. What about the 20% that are undecided or whatever that percentage is? That, I mean, we're just going to have to... We're, we're going to... Here, here's two things I'm hoping. I haven't put out that online application yet. And that's intentional mm -hmm. because I want to reduce, I want to roll out this whole plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted everybody to know that we're going A, B because some of those that were undecided, if I would have put out last week the online virtual option, they may have signed up for it. Right. Well, now if they see this plan mm -hmm. and, and see that it's A, B and it's smaller numbers and that a mask might not have to be worn all day, mm -hmm. we might can social distance, they may say, hey, we'll go ahead and come to school. So that'll all roll out tomorrow. If you all approve this plan tonight, or even whatever you approve, even if you have me make changes, whether you have me change the hybrid model, or whether you tell me we're not even going hybrid, we're going remote. Whatever you decide tonight, I will fix in this document, and we're going to let it roll out tomorrow with your blessing. Because I think people need to know. They need to know what our plans are. They need to be making plans for childcare. And, but I'm also going to stress, just like I did with you tonight in my social media post tomorrow, be prepared to change and pivot because if Ohio County gets hit worse between now and the 26th, 
I may touch base with you all on the phone without a meeting and we may all agree that we can't be in person in any way at this time. And if we have to do that, we'll have to say we're going red. We'll have to go all remote. Or again, the governor may do that for us. So we have to be ready to make changes at an instant. But that's my proposal under hybrid. If you look at the next page, it would give everybody uh, the example of the calendar all, all the way through October of who goes on the Fridays. It tells whether they go what day. So A and B, it's broken down. It tells them those couple disclaimers down there that we could change depending on the recommendations or what's going on with our data. Level five, I'll be real quick on it. That's if we're green and everything's good and we're going to school five days a week. But unfortunately, we're not there at this time. I wish we were, trust me. The next page is just more explanations. We've already talked about in person, all those options. This explains what virtual is, how it's a program, what it looks like, that Wi-Fi will be required or access to the hotspots. The other side of the page is the NTI page that talks about those who don't have internet but are not going to come to school. It explains what NTI would look like. So that's just two descriptors of that program. This virtual thing on the, the uh, books, books and stuff like that, like the Chromebooks, Chromebooks and all, are we going to try to help people get those if they can't afford them? Or? Yes. Uh, trying to figure out which bullet it was. Number three, a device other than a cell phone okay. is recommended. If you don't have one or can't afford a device, contact the school that your child attends or the Board of Education. And what that will happen when they contact us, they will get one. Okay. We will give them a Chromebook as long as they have, as long as they can use it because they have internet access, we will give them Chromebooks. If they have multiple children and they choose to go virtual, but they've got two kids and they don't think they can share because they're both going to work out, then we will send them two Chromebooks if that's what we need to do. The device will not be the issue. We will take care of the device. We just can't take care of everyone's internet mm -hmm. or we would be spending 30, 40, $50,000 a month on internet bills. So that explains virtual and NTI. The next page, will be a link. It'll also be on Facebook, but it's an automatic link that'll take them to the virtual enrollment form that'll ask them questions about do they have internet access. It has them agree to many things, statements that they'll have to check the box and agree to, so that it also asks them questions, do you need a device? That way we will know. Next page is classroom procedures, how we will stay six feet apart. Talks about the mask that I've already mentioned, that if, if we can be six feet apart, the mask can come down. Talks about how we will use disinfectant wipes to clean the desks in every classroom, you know, especially if those transition or class changes will occur, that way they're cleaned. And then we will have assigned seating charts and the, and the, in the unfortunate event, someone tests positive, there's that lovely new word that we're all learning or words called contact tracing that we have to answer the questions. Does anyone need exposure? And uh, those questions basically are, did you have a mask on? Were you within six feet? And was it for 15 minutes or longer? And if you don't answer, it can't answer any of those correctly, so to speak, then you've been exposed. So that's why these are extremely important unless you guarantee you're six feet away. Uh, what's that? Sneeze goes like 30 feet. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> visitor procedures. Parents and visitors limited access to the school. We encourage communication to be done via the phone or email if at all possible. During this time, we're not going to have uh, visitors eating with children or having those special days like we do muffins with moms or donuts with dads. Right now, we're not gonna have those types of things. We're just gonna focus on school and not those activities. If parents need to visit the school, obviously they'll come to the holding area there that'll be set up in the office. We will get their child and bring them down. We don't want anybody going through the building right now unless it's absolutely necessary. We're gonna to try to cut down on all the traffic. So that includes even volunteers. Our volunteer program will initially be suspended because we want fewer people in the building so that we're lessening the 
risk if, as much as possible. Transportation, every time a student gets on the bus, they'll have to have a mask on. We'll check their temperature upon entry of the bus. Have you, as you've seen, 100.4 is the magic number. If it's that or higher, they don't need to come to school. If mom or dad is there, we will let them go home right then. If not, we will isolate them as best we can on the bus, bring them to school, and then contact someone to pick them up. We're not just going to tell them leave, go back. We want to make sure somebody's at home. We don't want to ever send somebody back if they're unattended. And you can see the rest of the procedures that we'll follow, and that's recommended by KDE, that the bus will be loaded from the back to the front, so the first kids that get on will go to the back of the bus. That way there's fewer kids walking past them. School entry, same thing upon arrival, unless they're getting off the bus, their temperature will be checked, hand sanitizer will be there, and that's for students and staff, that temperature will be checked upon arrival. And again, we'll be wearing a mask, social distancing, so forth and so on. Hand sanitizer will be available in every classroom, every bus, every entryway. Hand sanitizer will be there. Food service, we're going to do our part regardless of what mode of learning they're in. Here's the challenge. We're probably not going to have the time or the manpower to go around and have all the stops like we've been doing this summer. So they're going to have to come to us. Obviously, when they're in the building, we'll feed them. But if we're having in-person school in school, those that aren't in school that day will be able to come to the school at designated times that will be set up and they can pick up meals. But we're not gonna have the capability of delivering because our drivers and monitors will already be working in the morning and afternoon transporting kids. And then preschool in the middle of the day, we're not gonna have the ability to run meals to all those stops. Athletics. You can see those general rules that we'll follow all the recommendations set forth by High School Athletic Association. Right now they said you can start full practice the week of the 24th. Games can start that first week of September. But the Board of Controls is having another meeting on August the 20th, which <laughs> is before the 24th, before regular practice can resume. And they did that intentionally because they could potentially change all the rules or the guidelines at that point in time. They could say there will not be fall sports on the 20th. So we will follow whatever that recommendation is from the High School Athletic Association. I did put on that last bullet, I want to bring your attention to it, because I know it's been a burning question for many. Students will be eligible for sports and extracurriculars no matter what learning option they choose. I'm not going to fight that battle. If the coach wants them on the team and they're enrolled in our schools, I don't care if it's virtually NTI or in person, they can come. No. Not at this time. There's too many other things we're dealing with. That's not one I want to wrestle. Mask, that just talks again. It's just a special page on mask, but it talks about we have to wear them unless we can social distance. Uh, I'll let you look over that on your own. The last page is what happens if someone tests positive for COVID, and it's all of those documents that you've been seeing everywhere, at healthy at work, healthy at school documents. And it basically talks about how they'll have to be isolated for up to 14 days. They'll follow the guidance from either the clinic or the health department. We will have to check for exposure. If the health department deems that someone has been exposed, they too will have to be quarantined for at least the 10 to 14 days. And folks, that could happen. You know, if we're wearing masks and we're social distance, hopefully that eliminates exposure. But there's gonna be times that it may not, maybe somebody got sneezed upon or something else and then if that person was sick then that other person that was beside them may have to be quarantined as well we'll be flexible for that we will be flexible with our attendance as a result of that when someone is quarantined uh, we're not going to hold that against them staff or students that's what those days that have been set aside for those emergency days if someone has truly has the virus and has been told to stay off work, naturally we will let them, and that's what those emergency days are for. If they've been quarantined and have documentation from the health department that says you have been quarantined for the following days, then we will honor that as well. And, and I don't want to use names, but I'll just tell you we've already experienced that here. We had an episode this summer, somebody was asymptomatic but had been on vacation 
They were coming back from vacation when the governor made the recommendation for anybody to be tested returning from Florida. So he and his wife did that as a precaution. On a Monday, they, he was here working and on Wednesday morning got the call that you've tested positive for the virus. So 30 minutes later, I got the call informing me that he was positive for the virus and asked me to contact Trace. Unfortunately, he was around a couple of others for greater than 15 minutes within six feet without a mask. So those two individuals too got quarantined for the next 10 days and tested. They were all tested negative, but they had to be quarantined nonetheless. So it can't happen, but we learned the hard way. That was earlier this summer and that was before the mask mandate. And we weren't doing our due diligence in wearing masks at all times. So since that moment happened, I basically issued a decree here at the office that masks will be worn at all times unless you're in your office alone. Anytime you leave your office, anytime someone comes into your office, you mask up. But that's how quickly it can happen if you're not utilizing these. So we, we've already experienced that. And will all of this be subject to change? Will at some point in time we have to pull the plug and go remote? More than likely. Just read the news. There's already school systems that have just got started and some of them don't have real good initial reports. If that trend continues, it could be enough to make me want to change from yellow back to red. But right now, my recommendation would be that we're at yellow and that I would say, let's go a hybrid schedule. Let's roll that out to parents, staff, the community, that way, that way they will know what our expectations are and what our plan is. But we will always preface that, but that it could change. And you're gonna to have to be flexible with us and we will be flexible with you because this is going to be a most unique school year. I wish we weren't in this place that we are, but unfortunately we are. And I pray to the good Lord each day that this too will pass quickly and that we can get back to normal as much as possible. But that's, that's our reopening plan that I will present to you. But I'm open for your uh, opinions or your criticism, whatever you'd like to call it. And if we need to make changes, you all make the motions, you all vote. But my recommendation would be that we approve this plan as presented this evening and that I will roll it out tomorrow. All right. There's a lot of information, I know. You have a superintendent's recommendation. I have a motion. I'll make the motion. A second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carried. I think you got to do what you got to do and try it and see. All that, that's all I know to do, Karen, at this point in time is I, I believe we can start safely, but if we turn in and run into, if we do run into issues, we will be willing to pivot and go a different direction, and then we will do that option to the best of our abilities. Um, we have reasonable closed session? Uh, yes, I need to give you a real quick update on a legal matter, and then uh, we will head to graduation. All right. Any motion going in closed session for KRS 61810? Oh, I can't. Karen, all there. Oh, no. yeah. Close it. <laughs> okay. We're in close it. Oh.